Okay, so welcome back. Today we are going to add some functionality to the application we've been developing so far. And that application is in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application using EMGUCV, which is a C Sharp wrapper for OpenCV. And it's allowing us, in this case with this video, it allows us to grab live streaming video over Wi-Fi coming from a smartphone looking out a window. And this is the live video. We've showed you how to grab that. And um, we've also shown in um, previous videos that you can also, in real time, process that image. And, and one of the things we showed you how to do was apply a blur, a filter, using either your CPU or your GPU. And we can select it here with a checkbox. And we're basically blurring the live video. And you're seeing the live video blurred right here. And we can turn that off. We also have another series in C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms where we are showing you how to, with the streaming video, detect moving objects like vehicles or people and put a box around them as they move through the scene. And uh, we've got a separate series showing you how to do that. In this video, what we're going to do is add some separate code that is going to allow us to create a time lapse over a long period of time of this streaming video. So what is that going to look like? Well, here is the results of what we're going to get. And this is something we did over about a six hour period where we were grabbing frames from this streaming video and converting that to a time lapse video. And here is the results. You can see the sun is moving very quickly. And this is basically compressing six hours worth of video into about 30 seconds. So in this video, we're going to show you how to do this really pretty straightforward. So if you think about how we might do that, here we've got streaming video coming in 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And all this has to do in order to create a time lapse video is it has to separately, in our case, maybe every 30 seconds, it's going to grab whatever the latest frame that has come in over this streaming video over Wi-Fi. We're saving that uh, each frame as we get it. And this is just going to every 30 seconds or however you want to set it, is going to grab whatever the latest available frame is and then save that frame, that image to disk. So every 30 seconds, it's going to grab one frame, one image and save it to disk. And as a result, with this video we did here as an example, after six hours of grabbing a frame every 30 seconds, we came out with about seven over 700 frames for the six or so hours that we saved it. And those 700 frames, what we're going to show you in the, in the subsequent video coming up later, is how to take those 700 frames and compress them into a video like you see here. In this video, we're just going to show you how to grab those frames and um, how to convert them into images and save them to the hard disk. So here is kind of a flow chart of what we have existing in our streaming video capture application. And you can see that um, 30 to 60 times a second, it's basically just going to grab a frame and display it. And at the same time as it's grabbing the frame, it's saving that latest frame as a global variable that other code can access. But basically 30 or 60 times a, frame, a second is grabbing a frame, displaying it, grabbing the next frame, displaying it, and then saving it. So all we're going to do is we are going to add some code that will once every 30 seconds, whatever that latest frame is, it's going to grab it and save it to disk. It also has to convert it to a uh, the correct format of image file, but it's just going to grab that and save it to disk. So you can start to see that what we can do is we can add a separate system timer set for every 30 seconds. And the event handler for that, all it's going to do is every 30 seconds, whatever the latest frame is, grab a copy and then convert it and save it to disk. And then wait for the next 30 seconds and do it again. So this separate code is going to be pretty easy to implement. You can imagine we're going to need a timer with an uh, event handler, and that's about it. So let's take a look at the code and see how we can implement this.
what we've added to this application, we've got all of the existing stuff, but we've added this start time lapse button. And this is where we're going to start grabbing the latest frame and save it to disk. So we're going to have a button that we're going to have to add an event handler and figure out how to set this up. But again, it's just starting the process of saving the uh, images to disk. So here is our C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. We've talked about most of this previously. I encourage you to look at our previous series. And all we're going to add is this Start Time Lapse button. Um, we've got the Start button that starts the streaming video capture. We've got the image grabbed every time we grab, you know, 30 or 60 times a second. We've grabbed an image. We get an event handler for that. Uh, button stop, click. And then we've got a timer we added just for the display of the status. So that's set like every 100 milliseconds just to give us some feedback, um, calculating how many frames per second. And what we're going to do is here we are going to add our timer 2 tick. And that is what's going to save the frames every 30 seconds. And we're, we're adding this system timer. And we also have when we press the Start Saving Time Lapse Images button, it's going to do this. And we'll talk about this. But really, um, it all comes down to the timer. And when the timer times out every 30 seconds, we're going to go to this method that we've added, Save Time Lapse Frames. So let's take a look at this method, uh, Save Time Lapse Frames. All this other stuff is existing. Save time lapse frames. As we said, we're going to create a new mat, EMGUCV mat or matrix representing the image, and we're going to call it time lapse mat. And then we have to decode and return the most recently grabbed image and save it as time lapse mat. So we're going to do capture.retrieve. We talked about this previously, and we're going to save it in this matrix. And then we can resize it to what we had before, which is this frame size of 1920 by 1080. So we're taking that image, resizing it, and saving it out on top of itself. So we're just giving you a, a resize 1920 by 1080. And then we have to convert that mat to bitmap. So we're using time lapse mat to bitmap method. And we are converting it to a bitmap so that we can save it to disk. So now we have a bitmap called time lapse bitmap which is the converted time-lapse map. And now all we have to do is save it. So we can say time-lapse bitmap.save and give it the name of the file and the folder. So I've got D documents, time-lapse, and the goop folder. And we can say number of frames.string. We're coming up with a name for this, which is number of frames.string and p dot png. And we are going to say system drawing imaging image format.png. So we're saying save it as a PNG, name it as a PNG, and here's the name, right? So it's really nice. Time lapse, there's a bitmap.save method that will do it for us. And then we can increment the number of frames so that we can uh, have an incremented name of the um, bitmap. So now with this, we can expect every 30 seconds or whatever we set the timer at. We're going to have a new image with a name that shows the number of frames that have been saved. And we've also got the button that starts the time lapse saving. So the way we're going to set it up is either you can start the time lapse or pause the time lapse. You don't need to do this, but we're just doing it for to make it a little bit easier. Um, where if the button says start time lapse, we haven't started the time lapse yet, and it's paused saving hasn't been started, then start the time-lapse saving. So if time-lapse started equals false, we haven't started saving, timer2 enabled equals true, because we want it to start saving, and then button timelapse.txt pause time-lapse, so that it gets prepared for when you want to pause it, and then time-lapse started equals true. So now if the button says pause and you, you've clicked it and the button says pause, and it's not paused, which means it is already saving right now. And the button says it allows you to pause it. So else if time lapse started equals true, here it was false. Timer to enable equals false. You turn off the timer. Button time lapse dot text equals start time lapse. And button time lapse started equals false. So that's about it. Um, now we have 
only added this new system timer. You can see we've got two timers, one for the display of how many frames per second, and now we have one every 30 seconds to do the, the time lapse saving. So here is the result of all of the images we saved for that six hours worth of time lapse video. And here's all the images. Now what we have to do is we have to figure out how to take all those images and convert them to a video. Now you might think, well, why not save it as a video in the first place? So for example, one reason I tend to avoid that is uh, if you are, for example, rendering 3D animations where each frame takes a really long time, um, you don't want to get through like half of the render. It's taking you five hours or so and suddenly something crashes and you have nothing to show for it, which is what would happen if you were just um, generating video directly. Here you would have, you know, half of your images already done. And when you restart it after the crash, you can start from where you left off. I tend to view it as a really good idea to, to save these as images rather than directly as a video. So we're going to show you in the next video how to take all of these images and compress them into a video. So um, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.